Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So time to go over my module 24 wizard build. When I'm fully buffed up and out of combat, you can see my stats as so. And when in combat, you can see they look like so. We have our power pretty much capped with accuracy as our dump stat. Our combat advantage nice and capped. Crit strike, it's a little bit under, but I'll explain why when we go to the stats section. And crit severity, nicely capped at 90%. Now I do intend to make gear changes for module 24, as I don't have all of the gear just yet for module 24. And so we'll go over that in a dedicated section. This build is built for boss fights, where you're up against a solo boss with out much else to do you just have to burn the boss down as quickly as possible amongst of course completing certain mechanics you might have some boss fights where you might have a bunch of ads spawning in this build will help but again i will explain when i go over the power section some options you can take to help you deals a bit of aoe damage in single target but it's all focused on dealing as much damage as possible against one enemy so it's the build you will take or the loadout you will take to go against bosses in dungeons and bosses in trials. And this build works really well in the new dungeon, as that is mainly where I've been playtesting it. You can see the pain giver board at the end of the dungeon. I didn't do so badly. Now just a quick disclaimer, I'm fairly new to the wizard. So some options down the road might change. I might change my mind with a certain set of powers and feats, depending on how it plays out with my experience as that will build up over time. So again, timestamps on the video play bar below. You can skip to any section you're most interested in, whether that be powers, companions, mounts, etc. And let's get into this. First thing is our power setup. And we're going with the Thaumaturge Paragon to maximize our single target damage. You can most likely get pretty good damage on the Arcanist. I just don't find it as easy. And as a new player like myself for the wizard, Thaumaturge seems to just be outperforming every other option. So first of all, we have our at will powers and Chilling Cloud is our main at will we use all the time. Ray of Frost does pretty much the same thing, just adding chill to the target, but Ray of Frost seems to have a little bit less damage. And then my secondary one is Magic Missile. And this will allow you to gain stacks of arcane mastery, which you might struggle to have five stacks all the time. And so you might want to top them off with just a few strikes of magic missile every now and again. A boss fight where there's a few adds spawning in, Scorching Burst can be really good to add Smolder to them. And then you can use Chilling Cloud to proc your Rhyme Fire Smolder on them. And this can also be a little bit of AoE with that as well with the third hit but it can generally just be quicker to kill off groups of ads by spamming Scorching Burst. Again, with practice and with time, I'll figure out what's the best, but that's my setup usually in most single target boss fights. As for my encounter powers, most importantly, we're running with Ray of Enfeeblement on our tab. Our tab power being this one just down here, which adds spell mastery, which increases the target's damage taken from magical and projectile attacks by 10%. And it lasts 10 seconds. And this basically increases all of your damage you do against the target. Just keep in mind of the cooldown being 15 seconds, thereabouts, and the duration of only lasting 10 seconds. Otherwise, I use repel for the mainly the short cooldown and the 580 magnitude. I see raise again if you cast this all against one target that's 850 magnitude that's pretty good but with a 15 second cooldown it does add chill as well so that helps and then chill strike again for the high magnitude 13 second cooldown thereabouts and we'll also add chill i have went and tested like entangling force and fireball on tab and none of them make up the amount of damage that these four can do and a big part is the feat shatter strike where you will deal additional damage when you use a control power against a control immune target and since chill strike is a stun that's a control power racy raise is a stun that's a control power and repel is a push which is a control power the only option ray of enfeeblement is not a control power but it's definitely worth it for the 10% extra damage boost to everything of your damage. Massive boost. You cannot miss out on that by using, let's say, Fireball on tab. It will no way make up for it. 
Of course, if you have another wizard in the group who wants to use Ray on tab, then you may as well run Fireball on tab because that debuff won't stack with somebody else's debuff. Alternative options is you can run with Shield instead of Chill Strike to add a bit of survivability to yourself. Or if you have a bunch of AoE, you can use Icy Terrain if you have lots of those as during the boss fight instead of, again, Chill Strike. I found Chill Strike to be a little bit less damage than Icy Rays. But as for daily powers, Ice Knife all the way. Massive damage, and it's also a control power, so also affected by Shatter Strike, also procs it. As for your AoE one, Arcane Singularity, if you've lots of adds you need to deal with, and you can control them with that then as well. I haven't found the other ones to be all too great. With regards to our mechanics, the basics is you gain an additional boost to controlling enemies, you gain Arcane Mastery, which is a 0.5% extra damage boost per stack, and you gain Arcane Mastery by certain attacks, mainly through Magic Missile, and some encounter powers will proc and give you one of those stacks as well. Basically, additional damage. If we make our HUD bigger here we can see our buff bar there and when we have our enemy and let's say we use magic missile you can see those arcade mastery stacks just there make sure you have five of them pretty much at all times they last you eight seconds you can easy refresh them all by just using another magic missile and that's back to full eight seconds then you have your chill which again you will have powers which will add chill effects your two encounters here and mainly chilling cloud whenever you attack your target you will see there'll be a debuff on them like a little snowflake and you want to have six stacks on them all the time when you have six stacks you will like freeze them and deal additional damage with shatter strike and then you have your normal teleport ability which most dps classes have it gives you immunity frames so that you can dodge enemies attacks and get out of red areas much quicker and otherwise you have your spell mastery which just allows you to run with a fourth encounter power and then you have your smolder which basically when you attack your target you can cause them to smolder basically take damage over time and then you can cause additional effects like rhyme fire smolder as well as for your class features i generally go with critical conflagration and swath of destruction critical conflagration you don't want to give up it's a free 10 percent crit severity and you basically proc your smolder whenever you critically strike so very good benefit and otherwise there's swath of destruction which just increases your smolder damage and targets affected by smolder take three percent more damage this i believe affects everybody's damage and it does work at least by increasing your damage and i found it to be better than just chilling presence which just increases your damage by an additional 0.5 percent for each chill stack on your target it adds up to then if we have six chill stacks of three percent additional damage boost and it should be get doubled to six percent when they're frozen but i don't believe you can fully freeze bosses and so this doesn't play any effect in single target so swath of destruction is better with a reliable three percent increase the other alternatives here will be useful within like aoe and otherwise not great for single target and so we move to our feats and i generally for most content go down up and the rest down and the first set of feats well it doesn't really matter what you go with if you have some weird fight where you have a bunch of ads and you can hit them all with your third hit of chilling cloud and have them frozen and they don't die well it would be better with relative haste but unfortunately how it is you only gain five percent recharge speed when against one target and so having the extra smoldering recovery and action point regen can be a lot more easier to make sure you have your daily power filled before the next artifact call without it you might be on the edge of only just about getting your daily power for the next artifact call and then missing out on that extra big amount of damage second set glowing flames versus icy veins both are pretty much just aoe powers icy veins will help you keep chill on your target but to be honest you're attacking with chilling cloud all the time you're going to have those stacks easily maintained so i just go with glowing flames for those fights where you might have some ads second set here 
absolutely shatter strike you check a damage log and your shatter strike is like more than 10 percent of your overall damage coming in second place of your entire damage that compared to just chilling advantage is yeah not even a choice there what you should take fourth set of feats critical burn versus frigid winds i would take critical burn if you're a newer player just to get that crit severity boosted otherwise when you're min maxing frigid winds is a small bit better just giving you an overall bigger boost in damage depending how many chill stacks you have on your target which again will always be six as long as you're hitting them with chilling cloud and then lastly hands down you want to be running with rhyme fire weaving i will admit i haven't tested directed flames all too much but overall looking at dps tests comparing my damage versus using either or rhyme fire weaving just decreasing the target's damage resistance by 10 percent is massive and i was if any of you commented before wrong in saying that this would buff up your allies it only buffs up yourself 10% additional damage for everything is you cannot miss that, especially using your mount power and your daily 10% extra is massive. That compared to directed flames does not seem to be worth it. So those are my powers. Now let's go ultimately to the rotation and it's very straightforward. You may have seen it in many of my gameplay videos already. What you want to start out with, at least if you're going with an artifact call right at the beginning, you want to like use magic missile like just one flurry there you get like three stacks and then go use like a chilling cloud to get your chill stacks and then you go with your full burst of artifact ray of enfeeblement and then just spam down the rest of your encounters with then your daily and your mount and this boss currently has no hp so you couldn't see any damage markers there but you get the point and you can throw your hawk in then at the end if you have that that is ultimately your rotation when you're outside of an artifact call, it's like Ray of Enfeeblement, spam down the rest, and then you literally use Repel whenever it's off cooldown, and you might want to wait. You can see like our Chill Strike is really close cooldown to our Ray of Enfeeblement. Just wait for the Ray, and then use your Ray, and then use the other two encounters. Otherwise, just spamming down Repel whenever it's off cooldown because it's got that really short cooldown. That's about it again. And just make sure you're using Chilling Cloud all the time. And you can keep an eye out on your Arcane Mastery stacks. Just check your buff bar there. Like using all my encounter powers, you can see will give me two stacks of Arcane Mastery. But you want to get, if you're min-maxing, five of those stacks before using your encounter. So just you can keep an eye out on that. Again, and you can change your HUD size here. We can change that down a bit if we don't really need it so big. That's it for rotation and let's move on to our statistics. Again, while in combat with everything procced off, we can very easily have some pretty nice stats. Again, you can see the sheet here, and this is with having our 10 stacks from the Serene Hood and all our stacks from the Sharp Jacket. Currently, our critical strike is a little bit low. I do intend to get this a teeny bit higher. When you run with a paladin, you can get this 2% more higher. And if you're lucky, for example, the new spider totem can give us an extra 2%. So if we're at 88% crit chance, 88% accuracy, and 88% power, we can make use of any of the three benefits of the spider totem which i think is probably the best way to go for stat optimization being able to fit those three options now you can see our power is pretty much capped out here and so if you have a healer running runic aura you'll gain another 2500 so what you can do is switch your garnet over to like a citrine and that way you'll be able to fit the healer's runic aura or even if your tank's running that now with module 24 i will make a few gear changes so we'll discuss that when we move there and what will happen to our stats and ultimately if you're building up your own character you want to focus on power first then combat advantage then critical strike and critical severity prioritizing usually critical severity before critical strike and lastly accuracy and lastly of course you go for item level you generally want to choose gear with some good bonuses before looking at item level so let's move to my gear what am i using 
Well, we can see most of it's from Dragon Hunts right now. The Serene Hood from Dragon Hunts. Again, Dragon Hunts are from the campaign Dragon Slayer. You can see all of the gear just here. You'll buy this stuff with reagents that you will get from killing those dragons in your queues here. Again, you can watch videos how to get all that stuff. We have the Serene Hood for up to 10% critical strike. Very easy to maintain once your smolder gets going with your shatter strike. And then we have our sharp jacket which is a nice reliable 15 percent additional crit severity very easy to proc you can see you just attack your target and you gain those stacks very quickly not as quickly as i would like but just using your at will you gain them there and as soon as your poison thorn gets going that will also maintain them or even if you're using your cursed burn it gets even easier now with module 24 i will make some changes and i will most likely switch the sharp jacket over to the tactful leathers to give crit severity and critical strike the reason being is then i can switch my boots over to the new ones from seals which actually unfortunately for warlocks and wizards gives 10,000 critical severity now i can fit that crit severity rating as you can see there from 72,000 to 83,000 so we'll be able to get the full 10 percent out of those 10,000 ratings however our critical severity will be through the roof and when we switch over to the tactful leathers instead we can decrease our crit severity by a little bit from some gear choices and we should be able to balance that out and i'll probably make an update video with my full changes moving forward but for now it's the sharp jacket combined with these boots then you have your superior crushers which i would like to switch over to the masterwork ones but to be honest they're really expensive and you just need to stay 30 feet or further away from just one ally if you have three of your other allies right next to you that won't matter as long as one person is at least for more than 30 feet away from you you gain the bonus i know it's contrary to what it says but that's just how it's been working for a long time then for our weapons we have the dorgan stuff from the master crown of Keldagon. i don't recommend anybody go hunting those as they're not that but great personally i will always just run with the masterwork weapons instead in most groups and i'm just using these for my damage test because i don't have the full bonus from masterwork here and ultimately they give me items level and they reflect what stats i will have to have in order to be running the new weapons which are going to be these weapons which i will want to get my hands on they have a massive damage boost with them it's crazy the base damage they give you on top of the bonus is just going to make them best in slot for dealing damage not as good as the survivability you're getting from masterwork for challenging content but once that doesn't become as much of a challenge people will definitely want to be switching to these and supports will probably still stick with masterwork to buff the party and so running these weapons which don't have any weapon modifications like you will see here allows us to get our dps and balance our stats without having to rely on those and it's definitely still worth it to go with these higher item level and damaging boost ones than these ones with their modifications these modifications won't add up to a whole lot all things considered compared to this massive amount of item level even losing the 10 percent modification here doesn't matter and then my boots you can see we're running with the serene boots which give us a bunch of power now i can most definitely switch these boots out to alternatives you could switch over to the seals boots just here and otherwise I plan to get these dark maiden's boots which will give me a bunch of power and also give me that five percent outgoing damage when running the new dungeon which will be the majority of content i will be running the neck waste and artifacts that i'm running with is the dragon hide one you can see it gives us the alacrity there giving us combat advantage and movement speed it'll give us a total of 7.5 percent combat advantage it's not the best set to be running i could run mythalar but also also, Mithalar is not great on a wizard, so there's no real good options there, and this set will just overall give a bit more item level, give you the stats you need, and ultimately it gives you dexterity intelligence on the main one, and then constitution 
on the waist. And those will all help you in terms of dealing additional damage. Our two rings, we have the Red Eyes Glare from Vault of Stars and the Soothsayer's Ring from Dragon Hunts. Again, the set here will also come from Dragon Hunts. Then we have the shirt from Dragonbone Veil or the Auction House. It gives us 5% combat advantage. And we have the pants that give us the Critical Strike. And those again come from Dragon Hunts. The shirt, I could switch that out to, I believe, one that gives me accuracy. I just don't have it right now. To be exact, it's this one. The corroded shirt of the dragon cult for our modifications again we don't have any on our weapons since these are newer weapons but on our armor here we have a power one we have another power one another power and our boots have critical strike then the neck waist and rings all have combat advantage there as you can see with the modifications there's nothing better that can go there and we move to enchantments and you can see this is my setup very similar to what i have on the rogue you may notice I don't have a forger's box and I don't intend to farm it on my wizard. You can definitely go ahead and do that, but it will require you to have an amethyst enchantment to just cap out your combat advantage. Like we have 82.5% plus then the 7.5% from this set. Now, this amethyst enchantment I don't usually have. If you're copying what I had on my rogue and completely transferring stuff over, then you will be short an amethyst and don't worry about it i wouldn't bother getting it and i probably won't on the live server either try and go for the new belt item this one right here the perfect spider totem it gives you a more reliable set of buffs versus the forger's box and personally i think it's going to be better especially in the new dungeon with that one percent additional damage versus drow and ultimately all i have to do is switch one enchantment out this combat advantage one over to my citrine can just drag this one over here we can just swap them and then we make room for that little bit more combat advantage you get from this you can see the rest of the enchantments there and you might be thinking poison thorn versus curse burn which one should i be using to be honest it doesn't matter at all poison thorn is pretty much just as good as cursed burn however keep in mind if you don't have as much time of on target as you would like let's say you have mechanics you have to deal with curse burn can end up that little bit better because it has a damage over time effect and it doesn't matter how often you hit poison thorn the more often you can hit the more damage it deals and so the safest option is curse to burn but personally i don't have one so i'm just going with poison thorn and it'll do just as good damage we're using these two overloads completely best in slot otherwise you can use ones against particular enemy types if you're running particular content like the draw one in the new dungeon but they only last an hour or so i'm probably going to avoid using them and they don't work on the ads then artifacts we just have nice high item level ones these are the ones i could get my hands on that look to have the most offensive stats you have the neverwinter standard the jewel of the north the dra red dragon's mark and the dragon bone blades which is a great debuff artifact increasing the damage the target takes and reducing their damage so when you're creating your wizard for the first time you're going to have to choose your race i'm personally going with wood elf and the reason being is it because it gives you the bonus critical strike and of the ability scores so if we continue with this we choose our wizard then you need to choose your ability scores here and absolutely go with dexterity and intelligence intelligence will increase your magical damage boost and dexterity will increase your critical severity both will help you with damage if you don't want to go wood elf there's alternative options you can go with human gives you a lot of stats you can go with the dragonborn whether that's the metallic one or the other one and you can go with gith or half orc or you could even go with the debuffing drow or the renegade those all work but you might struggle to get your stats and in particular you might struggle to get your crit strike up that we gain the benefit from the wood elf and so while leveling up you want to put all your ability score points into intelligence and if you don't have your critical severity capped out at 90 percent when in combat like we do 75 percent plus 15 percent is 90 then you want to go with dexterity if you do have your crit severity capped throw it all in charisma for the forte and the recharge speed then we move to our companions and you can see this is what i'm running with now i go with a striker companion in my build you can very easily go with an augment companion but you will have to change your own stats around quite a lot some very good augment companions i have neither right here is this owlbear cob 
with these three offensive stats or the icosahedron ionstone with again these three offensive stats or you can wait for the upcoming winter festival where you can get the baby displacer beast with these three offensive stats those are the three best augment companions with then having the festive tiger as a bit more of a budget option not as good with giving forte ultimately i go with a striker companion but that can be very expensive to have the right striker companion to the for the right content the succubus or the incubus are really powerful and you could run that companion in any fight and they'll do really well but to maximize the amount of damage some fights you might want a pseudo dragon instead for the pure single target damage that it can output otherwise the succubus is really good for the burst damage and the debuffs she put also puts on the target. The incubus is exactly the same, they're just cosmetically different. Then we move to my companion equipment and you can see we have this tarnished stuff. And this is the stuff you get from running the master version of Crown of Caldagon. You'll also get a piece from running the Scale Blight Summit Adventure. But ultimately what you want to do is wait for module 24 and you'll want to go and in the North Dark Reaches grind out the companion gear that's going to give you the exact same stats except with added accuracy you want to go with these ideal chain sword knot of the companion accuracy and combat advantage which is better than what i'm running with that currently gives me combat advantage and defense and the reason i'm running with these is because i want to balance my stats around using the new pieces and so it's not optimal to use these i'd be better off running the double offense stats with accuracy and crit severity but in order to be prepared for the next module i've balanced my stats with these pieces and these are like the budget options the newer pieces will very easily be obtained just by playing the game a bit but they will cost you like 250,000 000 astro diamonds each but will can be well worth it for the amount of item level and stats they're going to be giving you. And ultimately we have our companion enchantment. No other option can go there. And then we can see the rest of the bonuses. We have armor break here. However, if we switch our boots out to something else like the rusted ones or anything that might give us a different bonus or even combat advantage, and then we miss the power that we would originally have from these boots, you could switch over to potency just here this potency would give you that 7.5 percent extra power otherwise armor break is hands down the best one you can have here if nobody else has it in the group it's not any good when somebody else is also using it because they don't stack with each other but there are other options like dulled senses and vulnerability and i might make a video going over those that will also be good to help everybody's damage be increased otherwise we have the bigger they are from minsk we have Staldorf's presence from Staldorf. We have the Bateri from the Bateri, the Neverwinter Knight's discipline from the Neverwinter Knight, and the Alchemist's discipline from the Alchemist. Those companions are what I run with. So let's move to mounts. And on the current tab here, we're running with either Tunnel Vision or the Giant Toad Tongue Lash or this Golden Touch. They're all exactly the same with 3000 magnitude. This is Tunnel Vision right here. I don't have it upgraded. And then there's also the Giant Toad. All of them deal magical damage and will be boosted by your magical damage boost, which is right here, 8%. If you were to run like Big V's hand instead, you would only increase its damage by 2.8%. So that's like not ideal at all. Go with Tunnel Vision, Giant Toad Tongue Lash or golden touch for the optimal damage boost and then we're going opportunistic for combat advantage on our stable tab we have this setup we're going with two assassins covenant a protector's camaraderie and two warlord inspirations you could switch protector's camaraderie over to artificer's persuasion if you find that useful but otherwise there's not a lot of options out there very unfortunately combatants maneuver doesn't work against bosses at least most of them one or two bosses it might work but then it's not reliable protector's camaraderie will give you extra defense and extra critical severity when your companion attacks you can see the insignias themselves like dominance and skill across the board there then with the colors, you want to focus on having crit severity one first, then the encounter power damage one, and then ultimately movement speed, stamina, and your whatever. Doesn't matter. Those three don't matter a whole lot, and you could just leave them on purple. Don't worry about upgrading those. They will give you item level, but to be honest, very little. You won't notice any difference. So we move to our boons. 
here of course you want to be going with all the offensive ones here then go with all the defensive ones and hp ones make sure you pick up movement speed along the way and you also want to have all of the ones that deal extra damage against the different enemy types there's only four of them there but they can be useful when running certain random queues and then tier five you want to like your master class and you also want your quick turnabout i don't have all of the boons i can have here i did ideally need 60 to get the final master boon but we would go with bloodlust just for the extra action point regen and the additional hit unfortunately reducing the enemy's defense doesn't work with this then with the guild boons you can see those both there when running challenging content absolutely very importantly run revive sickness this one's giving us extra crit strike and this one's just giving us extra defense ultimately we go to our consumables and belt items what i generally use for my belt items is a stone of health or some potions if you're on the budget side my neverwinter hawk and then currently the bell i will switch the bell out over for the more reliable boost from the spider totem from the new campaign but that will be a while before we can get it and we have to figure out how we can upgrade it which i will find out probably on this monday for our consumables we're just running with a flask of potency gives us some nice offensive stats there squash soup some more offensive stats sun lord's gift elixir more offensive stats and an invocation blessing you can use to gain this extra grace of battle for the additional power and that gives us everything we need to get our stats nice and high i personally like to go with all these things because it makes it nice and reliable the only chance that we're on currently to gain extra damage is armor break whether that procs on the enemy or not it's usually pretty high and does and then the serene hood to be able to deal enough damage to be able to get the stacks of critical strike but if we're still critting then it only relies on our crit severity which is easily maintained and procced from our armor that ultimately long video is my entire wizard build hopefully this has been in depth enough and insightful enough just keep an eye out on the description below or the title for any updates i will probably make shorter update videos rather than make an entire another build video to add to this for module 24 i'll probably make an entire new build video for again for like module 25 as i usually do but otherwise we have yet to add a build for aoe which might very well be its own entire separate build but i'll try keep as little amount of changes from this build to what i'm going to use for aoe which will most likely be using the arcanist power gun so any questions feel free to leave them in the video description below and again, a special thank you to all of these channel members for their added extra support. And if I present this while, consider leaving the video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.